What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. 1LE. What does it stand for and how did it get started? It's a pretty interesting story, but I won't blab on. If you're here for the short answer, I'll tell you right now. It stands for One Less Equipment. Believe it or not, the entire thing started in Canada. Um, so, good on you, Canada. And this package has been available for over 32 years now. The One Less Equipment, um, it kind of throws me off. I, I get the less equipment because it turns out that this is a Z28 add-on. It's an RPO option that is added on to the Z28 package itself. And if you don't know what RPO stands for, it stands for Regular Production Order. And it's a code that they will tack on like. The Z line has always been like the performance so you've had like the Z28, the Z71. I mean, we've got the ZL1 right now in Camaro line. That's why we didn't get the Z28. Uh, Corvette has a Z06, so on, so on. So it all began with GM of Canada taking interest in these races, um, which they called the Canadian Players Challenge. And it was nothing more than like, Road course race, racing, sorry, I can't talk. It's getting late. Road course racing, which was anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour long. Uh, they also dabbled in with like SCCA. I know they, they also mentioned IMSA. I'm assuming it's just another road, road course racing type event. But they had this... Uh, class the classification which they called showroom stock what showroom stock means is uh these races there were no pit stops or anything so pretty much they were only allowed to change the shocks struts uh wheels tires anything of that nature so uh gm of canada was heavily involved in this and this is where it all came from now this was like I'll put the link up to this uh, short, it's it's one long page, but it, it's very interesting. And if you want to geek out on the 1LE package, uh, you can read it. And this is not the only one, but this is the best one that I uh, saw that pretty much covers it entirely. Phil Hughes was the, uh, the chief engineer, which oversaw the entire line of Camaro. Is it Phil Minch? M Mint? Mink? I tried. <laughs> it's M-I-N-C-H. But he was the engineer, the chief engineer that oversaw the brakes. They saw this need for this package to come to Camaro. And uh, I know Minch, you'd have to read the article, but he was the one that kind of saw the similarities in the Caprice at the time. They had the Chevrolet Caprice uh, brakes. So they tried to go to like a big 12-inch rotor and they wanted to uh, fit the Corvette calipers onto the Camaro spindles but they saw everything had to be reworked so they ended up going to uh, you'd have to read the whole thing but it's an Australian company PBR uh, to actually outsource uh, all the calipers for uh, the Camaro lineup after all the engineers had dialed in the car and got the suspension and brakes where they pretty much wanted. They outsourced all of the uh, testing um, and time studies to a uh, company which was Special Vehicle Developments. And like I said, that was owned by a private party and they were the ones that, I think that this had came into play by like 88 and they developed four cars. Um, which rolled into, after they had done in uh, this satisfied Chevrolet, they rolled in the actual RPO code to go into final production in 489. So they made four cars um, for 88, and they test them through all the autocross racing and, like I said, the SCCA and all those kinds of events. So after 89, when this... RPO code came into play. 
Uh, I know that this is still a pretty rare card. There was only like 111 uh, sold in 89. And uh, for 89 to 92, you know, completing the third gen generation Camaro, there there really wasn't any much more than that from year to year. But uh, fourth gen, they did step up. And I know that there was like one year had like 1,500 sold. Um, but it was a pretty substantial increase uh, in the car and like I said all of this information is in the uh, paragraph which I will leave a link to in the description below but um, if you like to geek out on like specifications and uh, they tell you pretty much you know the diameter of sway bars that they upgraded to and the struts or and the shocks and I know that Coney played a big big uh, uh, role in the fourth gen Camaro but fourth gen um, they did get a big upgrade. Uh, they upgraded to 400 horsepower. I think they messed with the gearing a little bit in the Borg Warner T56 transmissions. It did make them a little bit lighter. Now the, the less equipment makes, uh, sense to me since it, like I said, it was a Z28, but stripped down. It had, uh, roll down windows, no AC. I believe it had power steering still, but it was, if it could be manual and lightweight, this car got it. But it paid off because they were showing a wet weight of like 3,100 pounds with 400 horsepower. That's C5 Z06 territory as far as power to weight ratio. This read is a really cool read. Uh, I, I, like I said, I will leave it up for you guys. I would love to hear you guys' feedback on this. But I know that the 1LE package, 4th gen... Uh, ran up until 1999, and then it was reintroduced in the 2015 Camaro. And it's no secret that it is it is not the same Camaro because the one LE I've got is crammed full of everything that this car is supposedly not supposed to have, according to its uh, according to the lineage on its heritage. 32 years running strong, and man, I hope we get another 32 more. This one package is amazing bang for the buck. Awesome. It ends up being an awesome street car, and I am very thankful that we have the air conditioning and the Apple CarPlay and power windows and all the options available that you can get You know, all the way up to a ZL1. But I'm definitely happy to shine some light on the this subject I know I've wondered for a while like I said I want to hear your guys's comments on the one part I know I understand the less equipment makes total sense I understand that this was the mid 80s but the one maybe it was coming up with a new line maybe uh, you know running parallel to like the Z line um, I don't know but I hope you guys took something away from this I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you on the next one.